Next point. Number five. This question. Question. Um, there are two essential research questions. This is very. This is very important. All right, questioning. Let's put two asterisks. Right? Very, very important. Two. Two essential research questions. I'm actually going to write. Well, not, I'm not going to write that. It's too long. You can download the the PDF. You can read it. Um, the first research question. What, from the researcher to the participant, what have you experienced in terms of the phenomena, right? What have you experienced in terms of the phenomena, okay? What have you experienced in terms of the phenomena? Next, what context or situations have typically influenced or affected your experience of the phenomena? So tell me about, and now granted, you wouldn't write the research question like that. This is sort of a, a template for the, the research question. What's the first question asking, right? First question says, what have you experienced in terms of the phenomena? Well, you're asking as a researcher, as a researcher, you're asking the participants about an experience. What have you, the participant, experienced in terms of the phenomena? The participant is going to have to reflect back on the experience and then give you an account of the experience, right? So it'd be like one, two, three. Right? So the participant is going to reflect back on the experience, think about that, internalize it, give you an account of the experience. What have you experienced in terms of the phenomena? The individual is telling you about the experience of the phenomena. Here's what happened, here's what happened, here's what happened, here's what happened. It's at this point that you can sort of oscillate, if possible, or select. I don't think it has to be as clearly cut as it's presented, but I said in the last half of, the, the first half of the discussion on phenomenological research that um, you can do a hermeneutic account or you can do a psychological transcendental account. If we're doing a hermeneutic account, then the hermeneutic account is open to interpretation. So what you can do if you selected a hermeneutic account is after the person describes, right, after the person describes the experience, you can then, you can then interpret. You can interpret the experience and convey that interpretation back to the participant. Hopefully this doesn't look crazy. You can interpret the experience and convey that interpretation back to the, the, the uh, participant. The participant then will validate or invalidate that interpretation. Yes, your interpretation of what I just said is accurate. No, your interpretation of what I just said is inaccurate and here's why it's inaccurate. Right? So for, the, for hermeneutic uh, type of phenomenological research, Interpretation is, is good. Um, psychological is more descriptive. It's not totally descriptive, but it's more descriptive. And not only just psychological, but certain types of phenomenological experiences do not lend themselves. The example that I gave was about um, uh, a psych, uh, phenomenological account of parents' loss of a child at a young age, or at any age really, parents' loss of a child, um, without you having experienced that yourself. You don't want to really do too much interpretation, right? Just take it for what they say it is. Um, what I'm doing in this process is I'm making sense of the experience, right? So the first point is what have you experienced? But it's not just what have you experienced. They're giving me what they have experienced, and I need to make sure that I understand what they experienced. Of course, they understand what they experienced, right? So here's what I experienced. Bah, 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 bah. By that, did you mean da 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 da? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Okay, so I'm checking back and forth. The next point is what? Uh, so that's one. So what? was the, and number two, um, what context or situation have typically influenced or affected your experience of the phenomena, right? What influences your experience of the phenomena? What is the condition? What's the causal relationship between you and this experience, right? So this is a causal question. Right, so the first type of research question is sort of what was the experience. The second type of research question is a causal question, right? What, in, how, do you, how did you find yourself in this situation? 
while you were in the situation, how did you think, how did you uh, conceptualize getting out of the situation or remaining in the situation or whatever, blah, 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 right? So we want to have a causal relationship between the participant's phenomenological experience of whatever the event is and what led up to that event and what, pre what, what preceded and what proceeded from the, the event. I would add another to the two essential research questions and I have the second edition. I don't know if he updated it in a uh, subsequent edition. Obviously, this type of question is going to be a textual question. This is a causal question. I would also add a structural question, how, right? You want to, like, how was, um, in, in analyzing dot, 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 my investigation seeks to understand how, blah, 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 right? These are good, solid um, foundations for a research question. And if you're gonna, if your professors are anything like mine, I didn't ask three research questions. I asked one very, very thick <laughs> research questions, which I didn't present to the participants. Right? It, a research question is different from your uh, interview questions. Um, the interview questions are used to buttress your research questions, but the research question is for the community of academicians that are going to be reading your research, and they want to know what's guiding your research, what's guiding your methodology, what's guiding the interview questions. Okay, uh, best practices in questioning. So, what are some of the, we're still under questioning, and these are best practices. Some of the best practices in questioning, one, questions should draw from a common theme, right? The questions that you ask, again, I'm not going to write this down, it's in the, in the PDF, uh, the questions should have a common theme to the question. The questions that I ask, for example, um, pertain to either the experience in the concentration camps or wherever they might have been during that time. Some of them weren't in concentration camps. But one question, a few questions were all the same type of questions, right? I, I, I made sure I asked about, um, first of all, did they feel comfortable discussing their religious beliefs? Did they have religious beliefs after their experience? Um, um, but not only did they have, do, did they still remain uh, preserve their religious beliefs after their experience of the Holocaust, but um, how was their, I presuppose that their religious beliefs have changed, and I asked the question, how, you know, how has your, and has your religious um, beliefs changed since your experience? And yes, no, here's why. Right. In my questioning, in creating my interview questions, I want to draw from a common theme, because the more the themes of the questions relate to the phenomenon, Right, so here are the questions. Uh, right, interview questions. And let's say I have interview question, all these interview questions. All of these questions should point back to the phenomena. The responses to all of these questions that I'm going to ask should point back to the phenomena. If one of the questions that I'm asking doesn't really point back to a greater understanding of the phenomena, then I need to get rid of that question. Right? It's not a good question to ask, right? At least that's my interpretation, especially if you're doing a phenomenological um, research, right? In phenomenological research, the whole point of the research is to engage the participant so that we, the researcher, have a better understanding of the phenomenon. Any interview questions that we ask should contribute to a better understanding of the phenomenon. Where the research questions that we ask do not contribute to a better understanding of the phenomenon, get rid of those questions. Where the research questions do contribute to a better understanding of the phenomenon, let's keep those questions. So that's basically what one is saying. The second point, uh, questions should urge participants to identify the effect with an A, the phenomena I had on their lived experience, right? And this is the causal question that I just erased, right? How has your experience of this phenomena affected your life, influenced your interpretation, right? Well, you know, um, uh, before, let's go back to uh, the example that I've been using throughout, um, women transitioning into um, uh, a women's shelter. Before, when I was married, um, I depended on my husband a lot, and to be honest with you, my ex this might be one gradient of interpretation, right? My uh, the more positive gradient. My interpretation, my my experience living in a woman women's shelter let me know that I wasn't as dependent as I thought I was. I was actually a lot more independent than I thought I was, um, and though it was a very very tough time in my life, that experience made me recognize my independence, and now I'm better for it, right? Great, great, you know, it's a great outcome, right? Someone might have something more pessimistic to say, right? Um, but with respect to the research questions that you're asking, you don't know what 
the experience the person is going to have. So don't presuppose it, right? Just ask the general question and see what the response is. The question that you're asking, though, should go back to understanding a woman's experience transitioning into, um, into uh, uh, a woman's shelter. So, I, you know, how long have you been married might be a good, re a good interview question to ask. Or how long were you married before you were divorced might be a good research question to ask, but it doesn't directly pertain to understanding the phenomena of transitioning into. If the topic of discussion is, of the phenomena that I'm trying to understand is the transition into, then most of the questions, if not all, the, I would say, if it was my student, all of the questions that you ask have to directly pertain to transitioning into. Anything else that does not directly pertain to transitioning into is not going to contribute to an understanding of the phenomena and therefore is not legitimate grounds for interview questions. Different professors, different instructors, different committee members might disagree with me, but my particular approach to phenomenological research is that the interview questions have to directly address the phenomena. Where they don't, they're not grounds for, uh, they're not grounds for inclusion.